I found a, a study that recently was done. Uh, Deplatforming norm violating influences on social media reduces overall online attention toward them. From politicians to podcast hosts, online platforms have systematically banned deplatformed influential users for breaking platform guidelines. Previous inquiries into the effectiveness of the, this intervention were inconclusive because one, they consider only a few deplatforming events, two, they consider only overt engagement traces like likes and posts but not passive engagement like views three they do not consider all the potential places users are impacted by this deplatforming event might migrate to they did this huge study a quasi-experimental study of 165 deplatforming events targeted at 101 influencers they looked at reddit and then manually curated the data and did all of this stuff through a difference in difference approach we found that deplatforming reduces online attention after 12 months we estimate that online attention toward deplatformed influences is reduced by 63 percent so it works and on google by 43 percent on wikipedia Wow, so this is a really effective thing. 63% on Google and 43%. Further, as we study over 100 deplatforming events, we can analyze in which cases deplatform is more or less impactful, revealing nuances about the intervention. Notably, we find that both permanent and temporary deplatforming reduce online attention toward influencers. Overall, this work contributes to the ongoing efforts to map the effectiveness of content moderation interventions, driving platform governance away from speculation. Woo! So we got some hard and fast data. 63% on Google and 43% on Wikipedia from uh, deplatforming. That sucks for those influencers who were part of this test. They're like, great, now I'm fucked because you had to run a <laughs> test on me. I think that it was, they looked at existing deplatforming events. I see. So your Alex Joneses, your Milo Yiannopoulos, your Tates or whatever would have been looked at. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's I've interesting. I've never understood the whole, oh, but well, it's a Streisand effect. You know, it makes people Yeah, more, sometimes though. But it's very, I mean, Shane is, I'm trying to think. Kanye, of, Ka Ooh. he was already huge before, but Chappelle already huge before. So yeah, that, that you kind of have to have a base, and you have this leeway as well. And it's all about optics, you know. Mm. I think that Kanye's in an interesting position because he genuinely doesn't care; mm -hmm. he, he doesn't seem to care. And then, Jesus, God damn it, I missed. I was watching the Super Bowl. I even texted you during it, but I missed the Kanye. Ad advert. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, it was awesome. I only saw it after the event. Yeah. Just him on a phone. Hey, I spent seven million bucks. Buy my <laughs> album. Uh, thank you. So good. And it worked. He made millions on it. Yeah. Uh, but so he kind of doesn't care, as is evident by his handheld uh, Super Bowl, yeah. vertically shot Super Bowl advert. And then um, Chappelle uh, and, and Shane have got this, like, it's, you know, they gift people joy mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like you you guys, I said this ages ago that I feel like everyone should do stand up once so that they always have the ability to say, hey, I'm just a comedian. <laughs> They've just got that as the get out of jail free card. Well, my thing is, look, you can hate the comic. You can hate the message the guy has to say or the girl is saying. But like, why does it have to go away? Like, why the deplatforming? Why can't you just go? That's not for me. You know, when you're on campus and they're doing like a you know, a trans drum circle for uh, climate change, you go, all right, I, I'm, I'm not going to that. I'm going to get drunk, but you're not going to go, we got to shut this down. And that's the part that bugs me. It's like, why the shutting down? That's so, that's so Trumpian. All these people who hate Trump are very dictatory. Mm. You know, it's same with like defund the police people tend to make a lot of rules also. So I'm like, you're just policing everything. It, it's very uh, mirrored. I saw uh, this a house just around the corner from where I live that's got defund the police sign in the front garden. And every single morning I see this and a uh, private security sticker in the front window. Yeah, there you go. Every single time that I walk past it, I think like, is this a joke? We need a word for that. Like the, the climate change activist who's on the private jet to give his lectures about climate change. You know, the, the re this Republican senator who's like, God hates fags, but he's blowing a guy in the rest stop. Mm. You know, there's this overcompensation of like, you got to do this. I'm not doing that, but you got to do it. <laughs> so the the closest thing is luxury beliefs. Oh, do tell. Uh, so a friend, Rob Henderson's repopularized this. It's not his original invention, but he says luxury beliefs are uh, beliefs held by the upper classes that bestow status on them, but incur costs on people of oh, the lower class. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So defund the police is a, a perfect example of this. Another one that's kind of obvious is um, two-parent households ho have no advantage or getting married has no advantage for raising a child. So you look at the number of college graduates and people in the upper echelons of society, 
almost all of them are married Mm -hmm. in monogamous relationships with a classic nuclear family setup. And the lower classes that may believe this particular narrative that's pushed by them are the ones that suffer in the same way as you behind your gated community tweeting yeah, we really need to, you know, these police are racist and we don't, we, we, they shouldn't be there and all the rest of it. It's like, yeah, but you're not a black guy from inner city Chicago. Yeah, exactly. I know. And it looks good on paper. Like uh, I saw in California, they're doing a thing where they're lowering test standards for black kids because they're having trouble in school. Mm. And I'm like, I guess that's nice because more will pass, but you're fucking them in the future. Like, isn't that way worse? There's a huge problem in Illinois at the moment in the schooling system. Some huge percentage of kids can't read at grade level. And then they finish uh, high school and they get out and it's just, there's no, there's nothing there. They finish like K through 12. They've Maths ability is way behind where they should be. Reading comprehension is way behind where they should be. You think, what are you learning? I know. What are you doing I in know. school? It's scary. And you're following the Roland Fryer? No. Oh, this is right up your anal, baby. This is this is Chris all day long. I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, he's a Harvard guy, Harvard professor. Very, like the youngest uh, black professor at Harvard to get tenure or whatever you call it. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Brilliant guy. From the hood, black guy, made it to Harvard, did it, wrote a bunch of books, esteemed. Everybody loves him. He started doing studies on police and black... Uh, you know, crime and all that. And he came out with a study that there's actually way less black death from police than we think. Hmm. And they're not actually going after black people as much as we think they are. This is his study. He couldn't believe the numbers because of, you know, because what we've been hearing for years and years. So he did it. He did it for a year with eight interns working under him. He couldn't believe the numbers. So he said, let's do another year and do it again with eight different people just to make sure we got it. And it came out the same way. And everybody at Harvard's like, don't put this out. It'll ruin you. Which goes back to what I was saying about how I'm okay with the bullshit, but at least let me acknowledge it. They don't even want you to acknowledge it, you know? So he's like, I'm putting this out. This is data. It's facts. They're like, it doesn't look good. Don't put it out. They tried to get him fired. They tried to ruin him. They tried to meet to him. They tried all these things. He beat everything and he put it out. And now he has an armed guard with him all day long because he's getting death threats. So he's got his kid at the grocery store with a fucking security guard. And the irony of like, hey, I'm just saying it's not as bad out there for black people as we think, to saying that to now needing protection from a cop. I mean, the whole thing's wacky, and I'm not saying he's right or wrong, folks. Don't come after me. I'm just saying this is happening in America right now, and it's fascinating. In other news, this episode is brought to you by... Just Meats. If you're looking for more high-quality, ready-made protein delivered directly to your door, Just Meats is the answer. It's grass-fed and grass-finished beef, pre-cooked and pre-seasoned, and it is ready in two minutes. So, if you are, like me, someone who knows they need to eat more protein, but doesn't have the time or the attention span to be able to actually cook something for yourself, this is the solution for you. All of their meat is sourced from local ranches across the Rocky Mountains and requires exactly zero cooking skills to be able to prepare. Just put the pre-cooked meal on the stove and within seconds, it's ready to go. Whether it's their Texas-style brisket, Latin-inspired chicken, or Hawaiian-flavored pork, all of their dishes taste phenomenal. You are not eating enough protein in your diet, and this is a hack that means you can have stuff that tastes great, is responsibly sourced, high quality, and only takes you two minutes to prepare. Right now, you can get $15 off your first order by going to the link in the description below or heading to justmeats.com slash modernwisdom15 and using the code modernwisdom15. 15 at checkout. That's justmeats.com slash modernwisdom15 and modernwisdom15 at checkout. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Mark or at least weren't too offended, you can watch the full episode right here by pressing right here. <laughs>